Awaken Revival Services. Why don't you reach around, shake someone's hand. We're about to go into our worship set. So at this time, if you would like to come up to the front for a time of worship, you, we invite you to do so. God bless you. We're going to have a great time in the Lord today. Today is the day of the Lord. You made the right decision to be here this morning. God bless you.
serve an overcoming God. We are not defeated because we serve an overcoming God. He's defeated death, hell, and the grave. Amen? Every situation that we face, he's already overcome it. And his spirit that dwells in me and dwells in you, it's an overcoming spirit. Amen? We're not defeated here today. We should rejoice in knowing that we are the children of the Most High God. We're the children of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, Jesus. Heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in yours. That you wear the victor's crown. You are helping my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name. I will bow down in your presence fear is silent for you wear the victor's crown let your glory fill this temple let your power overflow by your grace I live and breathe to worship
grave could not contain For you were the exist to describe the power and presence of God in the English language or any other language. That's just all there is to it. Some special announcements for you. Please see your new October bulletin for all upcoming event details. There are some here at the altar. Uh, if you do not have one uh, or you can pick one up in the foyer, please do that and use that calendar that's on the back to uh, keep track of everything that's going on here. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m., revival service with Reverend Robert Tisdale. We're glad he's back with us this weekend. He'll be ministering the word here in a few minutes and we'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Wednesday night, War on the Floor prayer meeting at 6.30. And what an incredible time we had in prayer this past week on Wednesday night. We won, we, we do War on the Floor every Wednesday night. Well, we won some battles this past week. We won some major battles on, at War on the Floor this past Wednesday night. So join us at 6.30 Wednesday, please. Also, this Friday night, very special event here. This Friday night, a Section 1 youth rally, a sectional uh, youth rally. That's where all the churches in this section, uh, there's 27, I believe, of them. All the young people will gather here together at POLR at 7.30 p.m. for a special youth rally. Uh, Reverend Jathan Marcelli will be down from Ruston preaching. So please come out and support our youth ministry, our youth group, and all of your young people. There's also a Section 1 
women's rally at uh, the Pentecostals of Mandeville at 7.30, where Reverend Tisdale will be preaching to the ladies. If you have youth, if you have young people, uh, we are asking that all the parents please come and support your young people here at the youth rally. Uh, this is the last youth rally of the year, the last sectional youth rally, and we need your support. Your young people, your teenagers need your support. So parents, if you have teenagers, please opt for the youth rally on Friday night. We look forward to seeing you here. Also, next Sunday, October the 13th, we will be having a special service to honor our pastor, Bishop Marcelli. Can we give him a hand? Isn't it great to see him here today? October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and it is also his birthday month. So we will be honoring him for 32 years of pastoral ministry here at the POLR. And the service format will be different than our usual Sunday morning format, but it's going to be a great day, and I can assure you, you do not want to miss next Sunday as we honor our pastor. At this time, it is time to receive our Sunday morning tithing and offering and building fund and uh, missions offering, whatever you have to give today. If you would stand, please. God is so good and I'm so thankful. It's an honor just to be a part, just to know that every week when I put my tithing envelope in the offering, it's not, not a whole lot can be done with just my tithing envelope or with my offering or my building fund, but combined with yours, great things can be done, incredible things that can be done. Uh, so I'm excited to give to the Lord this morning. I'm honored that uh, I have the revelation of what it means and how important it is to give, to sow seed into the kingdom of God, to be obedient to the word of God in tithing and offering. And there is so much blessing that comes with sacrificial giving. And uh, time will not permit to tell the countless miracles and stories that uh, my wife and I and my family are walking in right now because of the prophetic word and the faithfulness, even when I was without a job for two months. There's some miracles that have happened and that are taking place. And God has opened up the window of heaven. Folks, this, word, this book is true. This word is true. When we put it into practice and be obedient to his word, God always comes through. Can we bow our heads? Father, I thank you so much for your presence that we feel here today. God, I thank you for everyone who came today to join us in person and on the web. But I thank you, Lord, for those who are going to take our worship a step further and practice the giving that your word says and practice the obedience of your word to give and to sow into your kingdom of tithing and offering today. I pray you bless every one of us. Pray that, that you bless the gift and multiply it for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would march from the back to the front. God bless you. to look around and see all of our guests here today. Can we give our guests a hand? Thank you for joining us here at the Pentecostals of Lee Road. 
and whoever invited you, I'm sure told you about the man of God that will be ministering the word this morning. We are so honored and we're thankful, not just for what happened last weekend and all this week, but for what is going to happen today, what has already begun to happen today. We're honored and we're, we're grateful to have Brother Robert Tisdale back with us this weekend. Can we stand and receive him at this pulpit at this time? celebratory and exciting in the house of God. The grave could not contain him. I just love the lines of that verse on that song. Hallelujah. I don't know him enough to sing him unless I have the words in front of me. But Because he wears the victor's crown. I don't know. I just can't help but celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ is alive and his presence lives in us through the vehicle of his Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Nothing better. Open your Bibles today to the book of Mark chapter 10. We'll begin reading out of verse 46. I would like you to uh, Keep in mind that this last week I began ministering to the house of the Lord out of Mark chapter 8, verse 22, last Sunday morning. And it was then in Mark 8 and 22, we spoke of a man who was blind and his friends on the behalf of this man, this was Monday night, brought him to the Lord and besought the Lord. On Sunday morning, I preached out of John 9 about a blind man. And this morning, I will preach out of Mark 10 about a man blind. So there is somewhat of a symmetry and a relationship between these messages. That I do challenge you to get the tapes to study these particular instances for there's great truth within them. And tomorrow night, I'm sure all of you will be there. I'll be speaking on a subject entitled The Transcendent Power of What We See. And it will be the conclusion of those three particular sermons and what God wants you to hear as a church. But today, I want to preach on a subject entitled, Hearing is Seeing. Tell your neighbor, say, Hearing is Seeing. Now, Monday night was, what you see determines what you will be. All right? And I could have titled this, What you hear determines what you see. But we'll just simplify it and say hearing is seeing. Mark 10, 46, read this verse and follow along as I read it. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith have made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Lord, speak to our hearts, our minds, our faith. Let someone's life be dramatically altered by the preached word of God. Let someone hear what the Spirit would say to their soul. Not simply with natural ears, but with ears of the Spirit. Speak, deliver, save, encourage. And this house said, Amen. You may be seated. There are 35 miracles listed within the Scripture. 
There is a bit of debate that out of those 35, that only 31 of them are unique and significant. There are a small number of supernatural happenings given to us in the word of the Lord. And it is imperative that the truth and the principles contained within those words be exploited, understood, and revealed to the people of God. It is numerically the most significant miracle that Jesus performs. The taking of dark and bringing light. The opening of eyes that cannot see. For out of those 30 some odd miracles, Jesus performs this particular miracle five separate times. Categorically, the most numerous miracle of any particular type of miraculous transformation he performs. Within those miracles, great truths and principles are communicated to you and I as the New Testament believer. Out of those miracles, the miracle we've read about in Mark 10, it is the miracle as Jesus travels to Jerusalem for crucifixion. There are only two miracles that happen after this miracle. The fig tree and Malchus' ear being reattached in the garden. This is it. This is the last miracle that Jesus will perform with another individual to teach us great substantive truth. He is on his way to the crucifixion. He is traveling through Jericho, that great city of antiquity. It is within Jericho that he will pass and never come there again. He has went into Jericho as the beginning of verse 46 tell us and he is coming out of Jericho. Simply put, it's now or never. It is either a miracle at this stage of this man's life. In fact, few people whom Jesus performs a miracle for are actually named. This man is given a name because of his significance, his relationships, his father within Jericho. The scripture is specific to give you a simple truth. This man is a unique and True, real, authentic individual. This is not a parable. This is a man named Bartimaeus about to have a miracle. But if he misses this moment, he remains blind the rest of his life. If he does not sense that something significant is about to unfold, he will remain in darkness the rest of his life. All of his life. He has spent relying upon the benevolence and the kindness of another individual to bless his maligned life. And I'll be honest with you. Life is difficult when you're a bystander. Life is difficult when you see others traveling down the road of progress and you feel left behind. There really isn't much worse than when you're an observer and a hearer of the blessings of God on others' lives and you feel left out. I'm not sure about you, but I don't like sitting on the side of the road. Three and a half years of Jesus' ministry have taken place. He has healed. He has delivered. He has restored. He has helped. He has been an agent of change, a transformative whirlwind throughout the ritualistic expression of the Jewish faith. Uh, He has been caustic, adversarial. You have either loved him and followed him or he has created great ire in your spirit and you have rejected him. And Jesus does the same today. There's really not room for ambivalence in serving Christ. You are either fully for him or you reject him. And it is in this chaos of human emotion and turmoil that Jesus walks on his way to Jerusalem within a week of being crucified for the sins of man. And a blind man sits on the side of the road. 
a man who the scripture is articulate to tell us specifically his name, his condition, and the length of that condition. For blind Bartimaeus sat by the highway side begging, begging, pleading, hoping, dreaming, asking. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. Not when he heard of Jesus. When he heard that it was Jesus. Evidently, this gentleman had heard something about him that shifted his posture from begging to expectation. He understood the ramifications of who was traveling past him. For he had heard something that had radically transformed his mindset. He spent his life pleading for the kindness, the generosity, and the goodness of humanity. And yet when he heard it was Jesus... He begged no more. He pleaded no more. Somehow, your mind has to be transformed by the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You have to come to the understanding that this is not a place we come to beg, to plead, to posture ourselves because of our pain. But we come to the house of God with expectation and with faith that anything is possible. No longer is he stuck in entitlement, but expectation consumes his spirit. Too long have you been influenced by the chaos and the reality of your condition. You must believe that the opportunity for the supernatural is in this house. Today is the day of salvation. If I could, I'd just like to preach for a few moments on what he heard. And when he heard... That it was Jesus. He began to cry out. What he learned. His discovery. And when he heard. That it was Jesus. Provoked within him. A response. He opened his mouth. And began to cry out. Your knowledge of Jesus Christ. Should stir something in you. Your understanding of his ability, his authority, his sovereignty should shift your condition from one of begging, entitlement, hoping, to a level of expectation. It should release something in you more akin to praise and worship. In fact, when you walk in the house of God and we begin to sing, huh, Glorious, there should be something within you that sheds the frustrations of your week, of your experiences, and your realities that begins to reach for what you cannot see. To dream for what you've never possessed. To hope for what you have not experienced. When you understand a simple reality. Jesus Christ is in the house. I hope, and I will not hurry past this point. But if you miss this moment, you jeopardize your future. If Bartimaeus misses this Encounter with Jesus Christ. 
he will remain blind for the entirety of his life. Let me make it explicitly clear. You don't have the luxury of bungling this up. You may never feel the presence of God the way you felt it today. You do not have the luxury of another year, another Sunday, another month. For none of us have the guarantee that tomorrow is ours. So don't waste a moment in the precious presence of Almighty God. You cannot be disconnected, ambivalent. You can't allow your skepticism, your fear, your frustrations, or your embarrassment. You cannot allow what you are and how you think undermine the simplistic reality that Jesus Christ can shift everything in your life today. I wish I had someone, a guest or a member, who would just determine in their mind, I will not miss this moment. I wish you could learn from a blind man on the side of the road. It doesn't matter who else understands the importance of this day. It really doesn't matter who else has an agenda to get something from God. It doesn't matter your stature, where you've been, what you've experienced, your history, your lineage, who you come from, or where you've come from. What matters is that you sense the significance of this moment and you don't miss it. Why don't you just take a moment and just grasp the significance of what's here in this house right now. I hope I don't have to explain it to you. And when he heard it was Jesus. And when he heard that it was Jesus. And when he heard that it was Jesus. And when he heard that it was Jesus. Jesus. Let me make it very clear. What you hear influences how you interact with people. In your marriage, in your thought process, and in your relationship of deity. What you hear influences what you believe, what you see. That's why it's imperative that you hear the right things. That's why you got to guard who has your ear. That's why you have to be careful who speaks into your life. That's why you got to be careful who you're friends with, who you worship with, who you run with. Uh, that's why to be careful what you listen to, what you watch, uh, what you allow in your intelligence. Uh, because if you're not careful, you'll be hearing the wrong things at the wrong time and you'll miss your opportunity for the supernatural. If you're not careful, the wrong issues, the wrong thoughts, uh, the wrong ideas, the wrong theologies will be influencing your mindset, your thinking and your attitude and Jesus will pass through your life and the opportunity for spiritual transformation will miss you Uh, not because God wasn't benevolent not because he wasn't merciful not because he wasn't present in your circumstance but because you were distracted by what had your ear I refuse uh, to allow the influences uh, of what invades my my consciousness and my mind uh, to limit what I believe shall I go to Psalms 1 as I did last week blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful notice the company as the company decreases as the sin increases the company decreases and the hold of sin increases he's walking blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly but as ungodly influences him he begins to to stand in the posture with sinners in agreement, in association in discussion in communication and after he stands with the sinner he will finally sit with the critic if you allow ungodly to influence you you will stop your progress toward your deliverance You'll begin agreeing with things that you shouldn't agree with. And before it's over, you'll sit in the posture of the cynic. And the things of God will be critical and burdensome and frustrating. But I've come to preach to someone who believes anything is possible. And when he heard it was Jesus... 
Faith cometh by hearing. That's what the word said. And hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing. Huh. Given to every individual in this house is the ability to believe. It is the innate human nature given to us by being created in the image of God. Huh? The ability to hope, to dream, to believe. But that hope, that faith is not released. The scripture said given to all is the measure of faith. It's not quantified. Huh? It's not qualified. We're only told that we are given the ability to believe. It's placed within us as the innate gift uh, of God in the being of man. Huh? Given to all is the ability to believe. But we are taught by scripture how to release that ability. What turns that switch and releases the ability of faith. The scripture said given to all is the ability to believe. And then secondly, hearing releases faith. For faith cometh. The Greek word there actually means ariseth. Faith arises by what you hear. So do you realize right now today the gift of God placed in you the ability to dream, to hope is released by what you hear. That's why you got to guard your ears. That's why you got to be careful. That's why you can't go to a church that doesn't tell you the miracles can happen any day, any time. That's why you don't have time to run with people who are skeptical and cynical and critical and unbelieving. That's why you got to be careful what you say to your friends and what you say to your spouse. Because what you hear releases your faith. Do you understand the significance in Mark 10? A man has heard something that has equipped him for his moment. That I don't know what day you'll get your miracle but I know ha, it is integral to receiving the miraculous but you hear the right stuff in advance and when he heard it was Jesus he had already heard some things that when Jesus was in his proximity he could respond appropriately that's why you can't afford to miss Sunday school class at 9.30 in the morning or whatever time it is. That's why you can't afford to skip out on Monday night. That's why you cannot afford to miss Wednesday night prayer. It is equipping your mind and your spirit and what you hear. That when Jesus passes by, you can have the appropriate response. Can I meddle in your business? It's no wonder you don't know what to do. You watch TV all week. You listen to the news all week. You hear negative talk radio. And you walk into the presence of God and don't know what to do with yourself. You haven't been hearing the right things. You've got to hear the right stuff. That when Jesus crosses in huh, to your environment, huh, you can respond the right way. That's why your company that you keep is imperative. Huh? That they're filled with godly resolve huh? and righteous conversation. Because if you surround yourself huh, with negativity and cynicism and unbelief, when the opportunity for a life transforming moment arises, you will not respond appropriately. I don't mean to be offensive, but I don't have time for your dirty jokes. I don't have time for your carnality. I don't have time for your negative ways. I don't have time for your self-centered desires. I don't have time for your irrighteous motives. I need somebody around me that fills me with the opportunity that when Jesus is here, I recognize it. I don't mean to belabor the point. Hello, and Brother Tisdale, they don't need to send them dirty jokes on to us to our telephones. Absolutely. We don't want our telephones having garbage on them. We're trying to communicate the love of God. Right. Our world is lost and going to hell. It's not time oh. to play church, but have church. We're going to release a gift of faith and power and light and love and hold it. That's what you've been waiting for. Can I just be honest with you? You spend too much time on social media. What's it matter what somebody had for dinner two days ago? I'll just tell you right now, I couldn't give a rip where you've been. What you did. What you ate. How many times you went to the restroom.
I'm not going to fill my stuff with negativity. Because I, I, I got to guard what comes in because Bartimaeus gets one chance. Jesus will never return to Jericho. And if his spirit isn't ready at that precise opportunity, his life is never transformed. I'm telling someone here, God has been directing you to this moment. It's not accidental. It's not happenstance. But God has been placing you at this juncture. He stepped into your life. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this opportunity. God knows what he's doing with you. Oh, I'm telling you. Some of you, God's been directing your path. And he's been articulating your day. He's been bringing. He's been stepping into your spirit. And you got to be careful that you haven't allowed life to intrude upon the opportunity of a divine destiny. That's what's happening. And when he heard it was Jesus. Do you understand? And uh, 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 here he is sitting on the side of the road. He's sitting on the side of the road. Uh, and somebody leans over. He goes, what's all the noise? Can't see, remember? Can't see, blind. What's all the noise? What's all the commotion? It's Jesus. Jesus is here. And when he heard that it was Jesus, evidently he's already made up in his mind what that means. Because as soon, the scripture says it, and when he heard it was Jesus, he began to cry out, Jesus! When he heard, when he heard, that's why when I walk in the house of God, I don't have to get warmed up. I don't even have to like the music they're singing. I don't even have to like the worship. I don't have to like the soloist. I don't have to like the colored lights. It ain't about that. It's Jesus is in the house. I've already made up my mind about him. I've already decided there's not a mountain he can't move. There's not a sin he can't forgive. There's not a disease he can't cure. There's not a spirit he can't resurrect. There's not a problem he can't solve. There's not an itch he can't scratch. There's not a rock he can't throw. There's not a devil he can't kick out. I've already made my mind up about him. So when I get an environment that Jesus is near me, I just say, Jesus! Do you understand? When he stepped in and he, when he found out Jesus was there, then just let me make it plain. Without feeling a thing, without any type of confirmation. He, listen, he can't see Jesus. He has to trust the words of whoever told him that's Jesus. Some of you need to get past this issue that you've got to be able to validate God's in the house. Get out in your faith. Some of you are never going to dance because you're waiting to feel to dance. You'll never feel to dance. Your flesh will always fight God. Some of you are waiting to run until I feel like running. You know what that is? That's self-preservation and ego. You're worried about what you look like. You're worried about what you feel like. You're worried about what's going on. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother, don't stop. You say, well, when God makes me dance, I'll dance. What good is that? Why would God want to make you do it? He wants somebody that says, I'm not proud, I'm not arrogant, it don't matter. Jesus! waiting on somebody to worship him because they can't contain it. This blind man has been hearing about Jesus. And when he finally hears Jesus is here, he can't help himself. Jesus! Let me tell you something. 
He has angels that surround his throne saying, holy, 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 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They surround it in automation, in a robotic form of worship, in awe of his splendor and grandeur. He wants someone made in his own image who've had a bad day, whose finances are messed up, who lost their job in the middle of a divorce, fighting depression to get out and say, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice in it and be glad. Your worship is not predicated on God's blessings. It's based on the reality. This is God's day. Anything is possible. Anything is likely. The word rejoice... In Psalms 118, 24 that I quoted to you, this is the day the Lord hath made, I will rejoice. It's the Hebrew word cool. And you spell it like this in English, G-U-H-W-L. And you know what it means? To spin about under the influence of violent emotion. He said, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice. Not because I got money in the bank. Not because things are going my way. It's just God's day. And when God's in charge, anything is... Anything is possible. Hallelujah. So he screams, Jesus, thou son of David, thou son of David, have mercy, have mercy. Jesus, thou son of David. Let me tell you something. You got to move your noise into worship. You got to move all the fun of Pentecost into worship. And the first thing you do to do that is you call him by name. We're not here to praise Michelle singing good songs. We're not here to jump up and scream because Brother Tisdale's screaming. We're here because of Jesus. And you call him by name. Jesus! But you got to hear me. You got to hear me. Thou son of David. Thou son of David. Thou son of David. It's only used nine times in scripture. That's it. Thou son of David. It's a term exclusively reserved for the Messiah. Thou son of David. It means you are the rightful heir to the kingdom and the throne of David. You know what it means? It's a term that's used for the Messiah. So a blind man, come here, come here, Pastor Wilkes, you've been running. Where are you? So a blind man on the side of the road gets what the disciples don't even get. A blind man, sit down right there. A blind man on the side of the road understands huh, what the, the Caiaphas doesn't understand. Huh? He understands huh, what the Pharisees and the Sadducees who've resisted Jesus don't understand. Huh? A blind man has heard something so empowering, Pastor Wilkes, huh, so overwhelming and intoxicating that the first thing he does is says, Jesus. He identifies him by name and then he says... Thou son of David. You know what he's saying? The Messiah. The one that is to come. They haven't even had the triumphant entry into Jerusalem where he rides on the back of the donkey and they wave palm branches. But this man on the side of the road has heard something. He couldn't see it with his eyes, but he can embrace it with his faith. And he said, Thou son of David. Come here, Pastor Byers. Jesus! Thou son of David. Thou son of David. Thou son of David! Have mercy on me. And the group, the bystanders, told him to do what? Hold thy peace. Hush. Be quiet. And I've heard this preached a lot. They wanted people to hush. And when you get tapped into worship, there are people that get uncomfortable. And they wanted them to be quiet. But I'm going to be very plain with you. Non-Pentecostals aren't afraid of your music. They're not afraid of your tongue talking. They're not worried of your music, your worship, your dance, and your praise. This is about more than them trying to silence his voice because he doesn't deserve it and he's praising Jesus. Let me pause. Jesus, thou son of David. So he acknowledges him by name. Then he acknowledges his deity, his authority. Thou son of David, the lineage of kings, have mercy on me. That is the three components of praise. You first acknowledge him by name. You secondly acknowledge his sovereignty. And the third thing you do is acknowledge your humanity. You can't make it without him. Jesus, thou son of David. And if your worship doesn't have those components, you just make a noise. 
But it's more than that. He's not just worshiping. He is acknowledging His Lordship. He is the Messiah. The scripture said in John 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. He said, Jesus, I know who you are. You are the Messiah. And the skeptical, and the frustrated, the disillusioned, those caught in realism and humanity, start trying to hush him. And what the world is frustrated by is not your worship, it's your revelation. It's your understanding. Understanding. I want to make it explicitly clear this morning. There is but one God, and Jesus is his name. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and that God, make no mistake about it, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. John said it. In the beginning was the Word, and the whiz Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among men. You know what the blind man's telling every one of you? In the middle of your trouble, you can still have an understanding of God's sovereignty, his power, his authority. Don't you dare base your praise on how you feel. Get past being intimidated by frustrations and circumstance and base your praise on God's identity. He is the manifestation of the mighty God in Jesus. May I say it again? He's not part of a trinity. He's not a small God. There is not a father God and a son. It is God all wrapped up in the expression of Christ. And they didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to talk about it. They were angry. They didn't crucify Jesus because he did cool things. They crucified Jesus because he claimed to be God. And I'm going to tell you right now, the scripture said in the last days you'll be hated for my name's sake. They don't mind you talking in tongues. They don't like you talking Jesus. They don't want you baptized in Jesus' name. They don't want you praying in Jesus' name. They don't want you tossing out devils in Jesus' name. But whatsoever you do, do all things in his name. If you're going to baptize me, say the name. That name that at the mention of it, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Say it. Pastor Greg's trying to help me preach. He said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto him in the name of Jesus. And a man on the side of the road has a revelation of the identity of Jesus Christ. Jesus! Thou son of David. Thirty-two minutes. Three minutes and I'm done. Jesus. Thou son of David. Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. I want you to see what happens. At his revelation and understanding, the criticism and the negativity begins. And they tell him to be quiet. Now remember, he had a voice on this side who said, it's Jesus. He had voices on this side saying, hush, don't talk to him. Be quiet. Hold thy peace. Let him go on by. He's busy. He's on his way. You're not, you, you, you have no connection with him. Let him go. And then watch what happens. Call her out for me. Holler out for me. Jesus! Yeah, do it again. Now you tell me, be quiet. Come here, Diddy. Come here, Pastor Jesus! Jenkins. Jesus! Jesus! Come on. This is Jesus. Okay, stop. All right, perfect. And this is my favorite, one of my favorite verses in the New Testament. 1049 of Mark. It said, and Jesus stood still. Do you realize that your worship, your praise, your acknowledgement of his deity will stop heaven? I love that picture that's painted by such simplistic words that when I begin to focus on his identity, when I recognize his authority and sovereignty, that he stops. That he stops. But notice when he stops. He's near enough to hear him. He hears him. You're playing Jesus. He hears him, but he st- and he stops in response to what he says. What's his affliction? Can he see that? 
So he, in his praise and worship, in his, in his reaching for Christ, he cannot confirm that he stopped moving. He cannot affirm it. Just like you can't confirm that your praise is making a difference. Just like you can't uh, see that your worship is making a difference. But you have to do it in faith. Because faith is only proven when you can't see the way out. Faith is only confirmed when you can't validate it, when you can't affirm it, and you can't confirm it. Anybody can praise God if they can see its results. Anyone could pray if you know the outcome. Anybody can walk in faith if you know what's going to happen. But real faith exists where you can't see. So the man can't see. There's a negative voice telling him to hush. And now Jesus stands still. And then Jesus turns to the people with him and says, Tell that man to come to me. Uh Now watch. Go up there and tell him to come to me. Greg Byers, do your part. Hush, be quiet. I want you to see a vivid picture of what's happening because it's happening to every one of you right now. There are two voices competing for your future. There's a voice of faith spoken by a man of God. And there's a voice of negativity in your own consciousness saying you don't need to do all that. It ain't worth it. You ain't valid. You don't have any reason to touch him. You're a beggar on the side of the road named Bartimaeus. Let him go. And there is a battle for your future, for the faith uh, that would change and transform your tomorrow. There's a battle by the negative and by the naysayer and by the cynic. uh, And there is a word of God spoken in the mouth of a man that can set you free. Now, Jesus, Jesus is here. He hears him, but he doesn't speak to him. He doesn't talk to him. He's near enough to hear his praise, but he don't talk to him. He uses the people around him to say, this is the voice of God. And you know what that speaks against? In our day, we go, I got my own mailbox. If God wants me to know something, he'll tell me. God is a God of order. God is a God of structure. And in Mark 10, God is establishing apostolic leadership and the role of the pastor. And he says, look, you've got to believe what I say in the mouth of human beings. And what the enemy is trying to do is he's saying, you can't trust this pastor. You can't trust this man of God. How will you really know that God is working? And the enemy has caused the mouth of the ministry to become maligned in our eyes. So we are cheated out of the supernatural because we can't trust a preacher. Because you know somebody that failed. Because you know somebody that made a mistake. We all do. But your faith has to have a fight when you... You refuse to be manipulated by people and their mistakes. So so he says, tell him to come to me. Now, this man doesn't know he stopped. This man don't know if he stopped moving. This man can't validate it. He has to trust the words in the mouth of a man. And until you can believe that a man of God hears from God, you'll miss your miracle. You'll come and say, wow, that's a good idea, Brother Tisdale. Oh, that was an inventive, imaginative sermon. You were really inspiring today. Until you get back to the basics. That from God's own heart, he gave us pastors. And that God's into the heart of men that you might hear what God would say. So get off your little arrogant high horse that God can only talk to you. He puts ministry in your life to change you. No wonder, no wonder, no wonder the bishop's on a walker. No wonder we've had two surgeries this year. No wonder God tried to take his uh, ability to communicate away over the last 10 years by surgery after surgery, affliction after affliction, because he wants to silence the word of God in the mouth of your pastor. So if he can't keep you from listening to him, he'll shut his mouth. He'll bring affliction and difficulty and frustration and problems. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that old walker. I rebuke the weakness in your spirit. I command healing to come back to your body. It's been prophesied. Ah, yet as soon as I touch you, healing over your body. Can I tell you something? 
The enemy wants you to believe because he's been weak that there's a spiritual weakness in that church. That's a lie of the adversary. The enemy's trying to undermine the authority and the voice of God in the mouth of that man. I'll make it plain. The rest of your life, God will speak to the ministry in your life about you. And it will be things that you can't see, nor can you hear. You don't know Jesus stopped. You don't know what Jesus told him. He said, tell that man to be of good comfort. Tell that man to come to me. And and the ministry walks over. And this is what I like. I don't have time to talk to you about it. But he said, tell that man man to come to me. And he goes over and says, rise, be of good comfort. He calleth thee. It is what Jesus said, but it's not. He speaks a word based on what the Lord told him. And let me tell you something. I I made up my mind. When the preacher's in the house and said there's healing here, I respond. Because they might be hearing something I didn't hear. They might be seeing something I didn't see. And I'm not going to let my human condition undermine my faith because I have a bad attitude. I'm not going to let my human condition undermine my faith because I've been listening to the wrong voices, because I've been hearing the wrong stuff. So you have to make up in your mind what voice you're going to listen to. Will you listen to a voice of faith saying everything's going to be all right? God's on your side. Or are you going to listen to a voice of cynicism that says you can't ever get out and it's ugly and you don't deserve it and God can't do it? But you've got to make a decision what voice is going to change your life. Hands are raised and hearts are open right now. Everyone stand. I would say to my people today, believe. Refuse the negativity that surrounds you and place your hope and your trust in my sovereignty and my ability. For I do pause over you and I have positioned myself that you might be free. But you have to believe. Resist the rationale that tells you you are trapped. Resist the frustrations that limit you. Hear the voice of the man of God. I have placed in your life. I will conquer all. I am your God. I am fully in control. The purpose I have for you, you do not fully understand. Can you worship me when you cannot see? And can you believe when you have not been given the plan? Trust me today and I will do great wonders amongst my people. For I am your God. And my way shall always be performed. Would you raise your hands and love him right now? All over this house, every hand is open, every heart's opened, every spirit is open to the presence of God right now. Come on, go ahead. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Open yourself up to the spirit right now. Someone in this house needs to choose to hear a voice of God that everything can be all right, that God can change your life. Someone in this house needs to open your mouth and call him by name, acknowledge his sovereignty, and recognize your own humanity that you desperately need help. Someone in this house needs to acknowledge his presence, his authority, and his hand. Here's what I want you to do. Right now through your worship, you can bring the attention of heaven into your life. And if you'll believe with me, I believe as we worship, his presence of healing and deliverance are going to rest upon this house. Are you ready? So here's all I want you to do. You just begin to call him by name. You begin to tell him who he is. And you begin to acknowledge that you desperately need help. And that without his interaction, you can't make it. You ready? Call him Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Glorious Redeemer, Healer, Deliverer. Would you raise those hands and begin to call him by name, Jesus, Son of David, Daystar, 
lily of the valley, rose of Sharon, bright morning star, king of kings, lord of lords, shield, buckler, uh, strong tower that I run into when I'm afraid, the I am that I am, the rock that the water flows out of, uh, the pillar of fire by day and the cloud by night. I know who you are. I know who you are. Uh, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh, you are Jesus. Uh, you are that name uh, that devils fear and tremble. Uh, you are that name that all was created in and redemption was brought by. That's who you are. Jesus, you are he. Come on, go ahead. Here's what I want you to do. Come to this altar and just give him praise. Just come all over this house. Just come in your mind because you know who he is and you're not going to miss this moment. There you go, all over this house. Guests are coming, visitors are coming, members are coming. Begin to open your mouth and call him by name. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, articulate your worship now. This is a time to be very intelligent in your praise. Jesus. Son of David, Jesus, King of Kings, Jesus, Lord of Lords, Jesus, one true living God. Have mercy on me. Start praying. Come on, tell him, Jesus, I lift you up. I elevate you. I worship you. I acknowledge you. Jesus. Come on, that's it all over this house. All over this house. All over this house. Call him good. Call him wonderful. Call him holy. Call him powerful. Jesus. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it. Call him by name. Call him by name. Come on, let worship roll out of you. Three components of worship. You acknowledge his name, you recognize his sovereignty, and you recognize his authority. Have mercy on me. I'm not good enough. I'm not free enough. I need help. Come on, that's it. Love him, love him, love him, love him, love him, love him. Let it build. Let it build. ready to pray together, I want to lead you through prayer right now. I believe as we pray, the Spirit of God's going to fall in this house. You ready? We have your attention for a moment. I'm just going to walk you through prayer. Focus our prayers intelligently and rationally on Him. And as we pray, we're going to let forgiveness sweep through this house. The mercy of God fall on people's lives. We're going to ask for mercy, transformation, healing, and salvation. And I believe it's going to happen today. You ready? You ready? All over this house, put your hands about halfway up with me. There you go. And say, Jesus. 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 Holy God. Holy God. Righteous, Redeemer. Righteous Redeemer. Substitutionary Savior. My deliverer, my friend, my strength, my help, my hope, without you, I have nothing. I acknowledge you by name. Your name is not a mystery. Your name is Jesus, God with us, Emmanuel. You are the day star. You are the bright morning star, the lion of the tribe of Judah, 
Alpha, Alpha. Omega. Omega. Beginning. Beginning. And the end. And, the end. and I know you, I know you. As, Jesus, as Jesus, my Savior. My Savior. Today, Today, I submit myself, I submit myself wholly, wholly to your holiness, to your, holiness your, sovereignty, your sovereignty, and your authority. And your authority. Forgive my sins. Forgive my, sin. forgive my actions. Forgive my lifestyle. Forgive my mistakes. Forgive my nature. Forgive my desires. Forgive my sins. If you do not forgive me, I cannot be saved. So as the man on the side of the road called you Jesus, acknowledge your sovereignty and ask for your mercy. I ask today, forgive me. And show mercy. I worship you. Your identity. I call you by name. And I ask you. Save me. From myself. From my past. From my sins. Save me. Deliver me. Heal me. Fill me. With your spirit. Your purpose. Heal me. Save me. Deliver me. I raise my hands. And I receive your deliverance right now. Uh, would you believe he's in this place right now? You say, but, but I don't feel him. That's all right. Believe me, he's here right now to heal, to save, to forgive, to deliver. Save me, Lord. Come on, that's it. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. I'm telling someone in this house, rise, be of good comfort, he calleth thee. Rise, be of good comfort, he calleth thee. I'm telling a guest, he's here for you right now. I'm telling a member, he's in this house for you right now. Forgiveness is yours. Deliverance is yours. Grace is yours. Mercy is yours. Healing is yours. And then you got to believe the word of God in the mouth of a man. You got to believe a preacher still hears from God. You got to believe a man can hear the voice you can hear. Come on, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's beautiful. Raise those hands and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Raise those hands and receive a miracle in your body. Shed the garment of who you used to be. And he, casting away his garment, rent to Jesus. Throw off the old. Lay down the fear. Lay down the worry. Raise those hands and receive. You've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost. God's going to fill you right now. Hallelujah. God's healing that back. You don't need that special chair. God's healing your body right now. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Talk in tongues, visitor. Speak in the spirit. Let it out. There's two of them right there. Receive it. There's going to be a member of this church lay hands on you. Open your mouth and talk in tongues. Open your mouth and speak in the spirit. Let the Holy Ghost do what you can't do. Hallelujah.
gift of the Spirit. There's people receiving the gift of the Spirit for the first time right now. I need you to be sensitive. People are speaking in tongues. There's healing in this house. You say, Brother Tisdale, I can't see that. I don't feel that. I can't confirm it. You don't have to. You just got to believe me. The Spirit's here. Healing's here. Deliverance is here. I want you to put your hands in the air right now again. I'm going to speak healing and deliverance over this house. And I want you to receive it right now. Are you ready? By the authority and the sovereignty of the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I command you to receive your miracle, healing, and deliverance according to the power that resteth in us by the authority of the Word of God, the sovereignty of the name of Jesus. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, healing in your body right now. Raise your hands. Open your mouth. Words you've never learned are coming out right now. You don't have an interpretation. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed to know what you say. Raise your hands, believer. When I count to three, speak in the Spirit. When I count to three, let the Holy Ghost heal your body. When I count to three, let the Spirit intercede on your behalf. You ready? One, two, three. Receive. Come on, let it out. There you go. Let your faith rise right now. Let your faith rise right there. Right there. That's it. That's it. That's it. There you go. Talk in tongues. Don't stop. If you've got the Spirit, you ought to be speaking right now. Hallelujah. Another one talking in tongues right now. It's falling in this house right now. No bit. There ought to be a believer praying for another believer right now. There ought to be a believer laying hands on a guest right now. The Holy Ghost is falling in this house right now. let this opportunity pass me by the spirit of God's fallen if I'd never talked in tongues I'd put my hands in the air and say God fill me with the gift of the spirit I'd throw my hands in the air and say Lord I receive you I believe when I ask you forgave me and I raise my hands and receive put your hands in the air if I needed a healing in my body I'd get my hands in the air I hear it I see it. You say, preacher, I don't hear it. I don't see it. It's in this house right now.
Receive the gift of the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is here. Many have already talked in tongues for the very first time today. If you need a breakthrough in your family, in your finances, in your future, you ought to put those hands in the air right now. If you're sick in your body, just raise those hands. Hallelujah. Worship Him for just a moment. Hallelujah. 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 
We've had other nationalities receive the Holy Ghost today. Other colors, other races, families, husbands and wives. Hallelujah. Is there anyone in this house that could believe? That could believe in spite of all of the negativity that surrounded the chaos that is you? Could you believe the preacher when I simply say there's healing in this house? Could you believe the preacher when I say there's salvation in the infilling of the Holy Ghost in this house? All right. Here's what we're going to do then. The Bible said that Bartimaeus, at that word, in spite of the negative words, that he took off his cloak. He tore it off. And that's significant because his cloak was designed to designate his place in society. He wore a particular cloak that said, I'm a blind man, I'm a beggar. And by him taking that off, he was disrobing from his past. All on the words of a man. He couldn't confirm Jesus was there. He couldn't validate it. He just believed. And right now, the scripture teaches us that if we ask and we believe, anything is possible. I'm telling you what I feel. I feel there is divine healing in this room for people. I feel there's still more that could receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost if you ask. The scripture said, if your evil father knows how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? All you have to do is ask. So here's what we're going to do. Like Bartimaeus, we're just going to slip our hands up. And we're going to tell him, have mercy on me. Heal me. Save me. Deliver me. There you go. Now, in your mind, I want you to begin to disrobe of the things that hold you back. I want you to throw aside the fear and the doubt. Some of you need to know what you need to tell God to help you leave behind. The fear, the doubt, the pride, the worry, the anxiety, the hurt, the unforgiveness. Go ahead, just take them off right now. Take them off right now. The Holy Ghost is calling you. The Holy Ghost is calling you. Rise, be of good comfort. Jesus is in this house to heal, to save, to deliver. In the name of Jesus, by the authority of the Word of God, the sovereignty of that matchless name, and by the power that reigns within me as the expressed gift of the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, I speak to every affliction in this house, and I command healing to flow through the people of God right now. I speak forgiveness and deliverance, refreshing, renewal, peace. Why don't you raise your hands and receive all over this place? If you've never received the Holy Spirit, never talked in tongues, and you would love to, we've already had many. I'm inviting you to push your way to the front right now. Rise, be of good comfort. He calleth thee. If you've never had that experience, you can receive it right now. Come on. Don't be bashful. Don't be shy. The Spirit's here for you. Hallelujah. I'd be honored to pray with you today. I'd be honored to worship with you today. Come on. All over this house. All over this house. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord's going to touch this woman. If there's anyone else who's never spoke with tongues and you're ready, the Spirit is calling you today. God's going to fill you with the gift of the Spirit right now. Hallelujah.
easy that is? She's talking in tongues right now. She's speaking in the spirit right now. Somebody ought to be giving God a little love right now. Hallelujah. I wouldn't leave this house. I wouldn't leave this house. Be healed, Sister Marcelli. Be healed, Bishop. I wouldn't leave this house without a miracle in my body. I wouldn't leave without checking. It is an opportunity. Don't let the moment pass by. Come on, raise those hands and talk in tongues. Raise those hands and speak in the Spirit. Talk in the Holy Ghost. Travail for someone else's life. You ought to put your hand on someone near you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. told her interpreter that she spoke words she did not understand. Can you raise your hands and give God thanks right now? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody love God right now. Come on. The Holy Ghost isn't limited by language barriers, by racial barriers. He can fix your money. He can fix your marriage. He can fix your body. If you're here, 
If you're here and you've never received the Spirit, we're still would love to pray for you if you've never received the gift of God's presence. If you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus, I taught about it this morning in class. When you repent of your sins, you are immediately forgiven. But when you're baptized in the name of Jesus, you take on his name and your sins are washed away in a sea of forgetfulness. They're not remembered again. You may think about them, but in God's eyes, God's thoughts, they're never remembered. It's a marriage. When I married my wife, she took my name.